with the race still tight, investors are plagued by uncertainty over whether Democrat Hillary Clinton or Republican Donald Trump will become the next U.S. president. And that sent stocks south last week. Political analysts on Wall Street still expect Clinton to win, but the small gap in the polls has investors on the edge. Some equity strategists predict the markets will likely rally on Clinton's victory because she's a known quantity who is not expected to make huge changes. Clinton has criticized drug price hikes and called for the phasing out of fossil fuels. Coal and drug stocks could face headwinds, while clean energy and hospital stocks could benefit. Expect the opposite, they say. With a Trump victory, their fears about the U.S.'s future relationships with other sovereigns, trade wars, protectionism and anti-globalization. A Trump win is expected to bolster drug stocks and dirty energy, meaning oil and coal producers. Joining us in, in the studio, we are joined by Professor John Strimler from Vert University. And of course, he's a professor there in international relations. And thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Before I get into the nitty gritties of these elections, uh, analyzing both candidates, Hillary and Trump, and getting in the mind of a voter, if you get in a voting poll, thinking about all these clouds that have been hovering around the personalities of the candidates. You remember the issue of the email saga, the issue of Trump over women and likes. How will the person then discern that the cross they make is a good vote? It's a very, very good question and it's a hard question to answer in the sense that people vote their identities. Uh, Americans have pretended that it was about policy, but what this election reminds us and this is certainly the case in democracies around the world, including in Africa, that you tend to vote because you can't know all the details of policy. You tend to vote for a person you feel comfortable with, someone who speaks your language at a visceral level, at an emotional level. And there are obviously alienated Americans who are drawn to the simplistic, indeed I would say the lying and deception of uh, Donald Trump's demagoguery. And Hillary Clinton is a harder person to contemplate because she's a complex, sophisticated leader who's been in policy a long time. But I think what has happened with Trump is that he has signaled this is a mandate on racism, it's a mandate on misogyny, on, on women's rights. And so I, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm pleased by the outpouring of support from non-white Americans, from college-educated Americans, and above all from women for, for Hillary Clinton. I think that will guarantee her win we will find out tomorrow. But, but the technicalities of this argument is that for somebody to decide based on sentiment or a technicality, given that the email saga is quite a very serious issue in as far as national security is concerned, but however, condescending views about women and the Hispanics and, uh, and so forth also would compromise a candidate. Well, one of the things about this election which is so perplexing, and the media played some role, I think, in trying to be too balanced. Uh, Donald Trump has called into question veracity. He's called into question because he lies all the time, and that's proven. He calls into question the integrity of the electoral system. No candidate has ever questioned the Constitutional, since the Civil War in 1860, has questioned that. Uh, and he does uh, run a campaign based on a mandate on, on bigotry. So that in this case, I think it's important to point out that people voting their identities is a step forward for America in the sense that Clinton represents a coalition of ethnic minorities, um, of, of, of interest groups that represent a more cosmopolitan America, an America that is non-white majority, which it'll be by demographic imperatives by the middle of the century. There are more non-white babies born in America this last quarter than there were white babies. That's a fundamental change. That threatens people who look like me, the, 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 the male, uh, white male dominant uh, tribal group in America since the founding of the Republic in 1789. That's passing. And that's hard for Trump supporters to accept but my hope is that the new majority that Obama appealed to and that Clinton appeals to will prevail. Well, I don't want to analyze the Obama legacy right now because we're at the core of elections now. But when, when I had some of the Vox Pops, when people were interviewed, they were saying, why should we vote for Hillary Clinton? Because she, she took away our jobs. And secondly, what can she do in Aleppo? And she says that she's going to increase the taxes. Now, talking fiscal policy, is that something that is viable for an American to say, I'll be 
voting for this kind of candidate. Well, they can say that, but those are very complicated policy issues. I do make no pretense to understand all the policy ins and outs of what is a globalized economy today. But I think, and I'm a, a college professor, so I can study and think and contemplate. But even then, there's a whole range of areas that are important for decision makers to act on that I can't, as a citizen, as a voter, know the ins and outs of. And I think what you're seeing in the Trump movement is a pushing of people to the, well, just vote your instinct. And yes, they'll use reasons like the emails, but to equate the emails, you must have an email account. I have one. It's not that easy to keep track of all your emails, and especially with Clinton's fear of the intrusiveness, which her whole life's experience as a woman, from Arkansas wife of governor all the way down, has been influenced by, by guys pushing around and saying she's too uppity, you know? And so she gets defensive. And that's not equivalent to what Trump does with his lying, his misogyny, and his racism. So there is an inequality in the way this thing has been argued out that I feel strongly about. But, but, but do you think then Trump has given this election to Hillary Clinton on a silver platter? I mean, he said, I'm not a politician. When you elect this government, you will run it. Well, now what you're asking is a really important question because what I have been surprised by is the amount of support that Trump has attracted. Now, part of that are the disaffected white males I talk about. Others are the Republican establishment that has found itself isolated by Trump's movement and wants to sort of be part of the process going forward and he'll control the legislature. But the, 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 the basics of this, of, of this election are very, very uh, identity-oriented, character-oriented, and not paying much heed or attention to policy, even though there are huge policy issues. Climate change has barely been mentioned. That's hugely important for Africa. Hillary Clinton is for the climate regime. Donald Trump thinks climate's a hoax. Mm -hmm. now, just before you go, I yeah, just yeah. want to touch on this issue now. Sure. Donald Trump says he's going to obliterate all the Obama policies. Let's talk about AGOA. South Africa signed for the deal, and then come Donald Trump. Do you think that it will be a wise move? Well, I think he is against multilateralism, and he's for American first. So how fast he would move against the Goa, I don't know. But he certainly would not practice the kind of multilateralism that a South Africa finds to be absolutely essential for advancing its national interests. That you can bet on. I mean, he's been very clear about his, his uh, mercantilist economic policies. He's been very clear about his security policies. But, but not the specifics, and he has given no specific indication of what he feels about Africa. But I think he would sort of support Jacob Zuma's pulling out of the ICC because he'd think the ICC is a waste of time, just like he thinks climate regime is a waste of time. It's, it's a very sobering moment, and it, it shows that no democracy is ever secure, not the least of which is the American, the oldest democracy. It's at risk right now. Right. Now you are getting out of the studio. What are you going to leave me with, Clinton or Trump? Clinton, for sure. Professor John Strimlow talking to us live right here on News Today. And of course, what do you say? Is it going to be Clinton or is it going to be Trump? That's up to you. You decide.